I started out thinking that um, if I would draw and paint things, that I would um, uh, do what an artist sh should be doing. And it, I was essentially um, um, uh, going nowhere. <laughs> but um, it, it was when, when I was in Japan, I uh, would go uh, painting landscapes with uh, different friends, Japanese friends, who were such terrific painters that uh, I, uh, I learned a lot from them about how to paint, not yet what to paint. Um, I went to the um, Art Institute in San Francisco uh, to take a, a ceramics class. And um, we were told to, to look around at a, um, an exhibition by Peter Volkos and several other um, um, prominent people in the craft. And uh, I, having lived in Japan, I knew a lot about ceramics, a lot of ceramics. And um, here was this Peter Volkos from California. And uh, oh my goodness, uh, let's go see what is in that gallery. And I went in and I was shocked. It was the most awful stuff I had ever seen in my life. And um, I had to get out of there. And as I was leaving, I remember sort of shaking my fist at um, somebody from California would do this. And uh, it, I was hooked the way you, you could be hooked um, uh, with a harpoon because something like a year and a half or two later, I was teaching in some little college in Illinois and I was curious about doing more in ceramics and uh, found out that Peter Volkers was going to be teaching in Missoula, Montana. And I thought, oh my goodness, uh, uh, I've got to do something about this. So I signed up for a 10-week course, went there and discovered a mentor, the most important mentor I would ever have in my life, um, a magnificent human being who um, uh, wanted to be called Pete. And uh, I asked him, um, what was the hardest thing to make in ceramics? And he said, a good bowl. <laughs> and I said, well, who makes good bowls? He said, John Mason. And in time, I got to know John Mason. And I'm um, talking about meeting people through friends and so on. It's the people we meet through people we know who can extend our world in terrific ways. And I've been very lucky that way, and um, wouldn't be here tonight if that weren't the case. I have to say that, please applaud. I mean, Jim has um, been a kind of inspiration to me and many, many others in the in the in the arts around the country for precisely what Michael was kind of alluding to, because. What we don't talk about in the arts, we, 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 have a, we have a terrible fixation with sort of virtuosity and monetary success. And we, we very rarely talk about the hard work that people within the arts do to, to provide a platform and a pedestal for the next generation of people coming along. And Jim has so seamlessly and effortlessly sort of embodied that in his career. He was the head of the, the visual arts pro program at the NEA, uh, was, a, was the director of the American Academy in Rome, came home and taught at the University of California, Berkeley, all the while unwittingly putting his own practice on the back burner, right? Because there are these things that take precedent over uh, a sort of you know the pursuit of fame or success within the within the career, and it, 
to look back on a career like Jim's, you have to look at the sort of generosity that's in, that's implicit in those decisions. And it's um, he's a remarkable artist. He ought to be on the Mount Rushmore of of ceramic artists around the world. But he is too humble to say it himself because he's been too busy platforming other people's work. Even in the description of how he does it, he's talking about the other people that got him here. So uh, we're honored to have him. And, and I think you guys did a, a great job of sort of making the, the collection of work that's included in the new zoetrope sort of um, reflect that kinship between the authors and the, and the you know, the work that, that you show of Jim's in the magazine.